Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. I am with my friend Ani Gupta from Accelerant. Ani and I are at Drupal South, and um, we've been continuing a conversation that I actually started with your colleague Piyush recently about the changing face of IT and open source in India, especially, and this yeah. move from, um, Ani put a great headline on it, which is from consumption to contribution. Well, actually, that headline came from, I think, Ankur or somebody else at Accelerant. We don't know. We collaborated on that. All right. Headline, so. We open source that slogan. We open source that slogan. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing Drupal? Ah, uh, 2004 was my first foray um, interaction with Drupal. It was a little project for a volunteer forum um, in Dharamsala. I was I was working in the Delhi. I mean, uh, but it was for the Tibetan, Tibetan government in exile in Dharamsala. It was Drupal four. It was quite painful. Wow. Yes. That's old school. That's really though. old school. Wait a minute. And. How did you come to choose Drupal at well, that point? The Drupal was already chosen by the um, administrators of the forum, but they needed help to set it up properly and everything. So that was actually how I discovered Drupal, honestly. But later on, the actual love affair started in uh, 2008, 2009, when I was setting up my company in Delhi, and I was going through technology stacks, and at that time looking at you know what's good for setting up an enterprise-level professional services company. And Drupal, I, I did Joomla, Mam, well, Joomla, Mamba, whatever, and WordPress, obviously, but Drupal 6 at that time, I believe. Because I had a large project to execute. It was a multilingual project. The first project that I did was a Japanese-English project, and Drupal 6 just, you know, was per a perfect choice, and I just fell in love with it. Actually, not just Drupal, the technology, it's the community. I mean, I've always felt that the community, uh, the Drupal community is special. It's different from other open source communities. I mean, they're all about giving back and contributing, but the Drupal community has something really special. Every time I've attended a camp or organized camps, I've just felt an enormous amount of encouragement and support that everybody wants to give out to everybody else, which is really, really special, honestly, to me. Yeah. I think it's um, it's been a massive uh, importance to me that the Drupal community provides so much more. Um, you know, and, and Drupal has evolved fr from that. There are better tools at, for specific tasks that are out there. Maybe there are better technologies too, but the community wins. Right, there's something to be said for having 20, 30,000 developers on your side when you, right, when you yeah. go in for a project. Exactly. Okay, but flashback yeah. to the first time you opened up Drupal 4 and you knew you had to deliver something on it. <laughs> oh my lord, man. I had a lot more hair then, but you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it was a nightmare. I was—I remember setting up, trying to set up a user registration form and everything. Oh boy, oh boy. And I well, was, was like, it this four, is crap. Which version of four was it? Um, I think it was four point five or four point. So there was no forms API yet. Yeah. So right, an installation you had to—you had to set up the database yourself. Well, I, locally, yeah. I mean, so you know, everything. There was no DevOps at that time. There was no Git really. I, I don't even think they were using SVN or, or whatever. So it was all kind of you know. Well, Drupal.org was on CVS. Okay, yeah. I mean, honestly, at that time, the community was tiny, so there wasn't even, you know, I mean, I didn't even go to Drupal.org necessarily to kind of, you know, ask questions at that time. But today, I mean, I tell everybody, hell, if you don't have a Drupal.org account, what the hell are you doing at a camp? At okay, Drupal Camp Mumbai, which we just had in February, it was one of the first things that we t told people. In fact, you know, we had 238 people, mostly students at a code sprint in the, the, the last day. All of them opened up a Drupal.org account, you know, because that's important. You have to get part of the community. And at Drupal.org today, it's improved quite a bit. I mean, today I just uh, learned how to uh, check out issue queues. I mean, I've no, I've, I haven't been a developer for a while, right? But um, to get into an issue queue, actually tag it and understand you know, how to respond. There's a certain protocol around it. It was amazing the way people were helping out, right? Mentors helping out. When Kim got on and actually showed how to patch things, how to do that thing, it was just absolutely fantastic. You don't find that um, kind of openness and support in other communities. People are pretty kind of, you know, fanboyish about about technology. But Drupal is about helping out. Yeah, Drupal has a real mentoring culture yeah, yeah. and a really, uh, there's, there is very little RTFM 
it's it's yeah. very much about helping everyone get up to speed. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty nice. Compare um, being an open source businessman mm -hmm. to proprietary. No, but I think um, there is a challenge there. Open source, before also, uh, until about a few years ago, people were questioning the security aspect of it. If you go to an enterprise, um, you know, they were like, well, I'm not sure if the code is available to everybody, how secure my deployment is going to be, and blah, blah, blah. Today, I actually know companies that are demanding Drupal installations uh, over, like, let's say, Sitecore or others, because they know that when you have a, a community so large, yes, there might be some few bad apples there, but it's the really good apple that always will squash every single problem that comes out. So it's a, by, by, by the nature of the community, it actually becomes more secure because any uh, hack that happens out there is going to get you know, taken care of within, within minutes. Sometimes. Right, and, and having all the code repositories together and openly available, um, we build a real reputation economy around it. Oh, absolutely. Also, you're seeing a massive uh, adoption in government Hell, it's, uh, there's the use cases, there are case studies out there for White House and now the Australian government adopting it en masse. It's absolutely amazing. I think we're going to try to do the same thing in India now, uh, very soon, try to get stakeholders involved. Um, yeah, so Drupal today is, I think it's a, it's at a beautiful place, right? Five years ago even, maybe three years ago even, things were challenging. And there's another issue, right? So it's about a lot of people work um, on a work, for, a work product kind of a contract. Clients want the, to own the code base, and they don't understand that an open source code base is actually still a, well, available to everybody. There, there's still a lot of teaching to be done, I would say. It's not that easy to have a package system. But what people are beginning to understand is that you can develop fantastically complex applications using Drupal, and they don't, there's, no app, you know, there's no licensing fees involved. There's no millions of dollars to pay for ridiculous licensing fees, which actually don't mean anything at the end of the day. Really, so businesses are actually waking up, and in a big way, especially in India, which is great. Uh, and, and, uh, the amount of demand that I'm seeing in Australia around Drupal services and Drupal development applications is absolutely fantastic. As a businessman, I don't have the impression that you ever wanted to set yourself up as cheap outsourced labor. Talk about what's going on in open source in India now, and the new self-aware contributing. Um, service providers who are who are standing up to be their own brands and their own um, right. how can I say it? well yeah I mean, I'm gonna go uh, just provide uh, you know a little history obviously India is quite well known or infamously known to be a very cheap destination for software services and yes you know the sweat the sweatshop like factories that people have set up of hundreds of hundreds of uh, coders just you know packing away on, on, on machines and to some extent that is still true and it will remain true I personally and a lot of my colleagues and my peers have uh, felt that India actually has an amazing amount of talent, in you know, in-house talent that has grown, and I mean that's evident today. I think 25% of our new Silicon Valley tech um, startups are all Indian-owned uh, um, or Indian-started, uh, headed. But so my thing has been yes, it's it's been a challenge for us to actually establish India as a destination to source really good, fantastic software development work. Um, but it's, what's happened in the last, uh, I would say in the last five years is actually quite, uh, three, three to five years has brought a lot of um, new changes to, to um, the landscape. And a lot of that has to do because of open source software, communities like Ruby and Drupal, and also the startup boom that has happened in India in the last three years. So earlier it was, um, I mean, well, software development largely in India has been, why are there so many software developers? Because it's easy to get a certification in some, like, you know, Microsoft.net or Java or something, and people got that and quickly got a job. That was a, a very big consideration for a lot of people. And that was, so it was a development that was a run, that was, that was based around how can, you know, I be secure, I can get a good job. Today, things, are changing quite rapidly. People are still going for certifications and getting jobs based on that. But there is, um, there's been two things that have happened simultaneously. One is um, the open source community exploded. What, one of the prime reasons for that, honestly, it started with Ruby actually first. Um, Drupal has exploded since, I, was, I, was, I would say 2011 was a watershed when Drees came to India. 
everybody who was providing Google services became aware of a larger community at hand, and obviously why contributions were important. The discussion started happening. The challenge is still there in terms of contributions are still weak from India, but people are beginning to understand the importance of it. The businesses have started uh, moving uh, towards a contribution culture because they understand the ROI in that. But more importantly, developers themselves become aware that becoming part of a, an open community and sharing ideas actually makes them stronger and better. Um, the startup culture has been very important in terms of showing that there is a better way to enjoy software and develop really cool applications that make a hell of a lot of money as well ah. in India. Um, Would it be fair to say that with, especially with startups coming, native, native startups coming, that Indian software development used to be very outward focused, focusing on providing software for other places, and now more and more people are looking inwards to build something solid oh, absolutely. within India? Yeah, so there is a massive demand on you know, really good talent and very good pay. So yes, so the startup um, the scene in India, again, the startup scene in India has now uh, provided very, very profitable in homegrown uh, companies that require a massive amount of really good talent at really good salaries, so that's one thing. The startups are definitely looking obviously inward, and unlike before, even the startups are solving Indian problems. They, they require service, professional, professional services uh, as well. So companies like mine, like Accelerant, although we are still not looking inward yet, in terms of professional services, they're not inward looking. Um, I do believe that the culture is carrying over. You know, So a lot of professional services, especially so companies that are built around open source software, at least, they, they understand that without contributing back to the community, whether it be Ruby or Python or even WordPress or Drupal or any, anything, they understand that if they're not part of the community, then they're, they're, they're actually losing out in a massive way. You know, branding becomes very important. People start talking about these companies that contribute right. back. So those things and are there's, And there's real business value to be had yeah. in, in contributing. So while some companies are struggling and we keep this, uh, you know, this question keeps popping up, uh, popping up at every CXO uh, roundtable we have at, 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 at our Drupal camps, for example, hey, how do, we, how do I get my guys to contribute back? They don't have time. So, you know, things are, but, but people are learning from each other. Accelerant, for example, has made it part of our work day. We don't have to have set aside hours to work on a contribution. Actually, you discover a problem, you solve a problem, you push a patch out. <laughs> That's a contribution. That's you awesome. get involved in community events. I mean, all our guys are now involved in community events and organizing it, meetups, you know, sharing, just getting on an issue queue itself is fine, right? You, everybody discovers a problem and discovers a solution one way, one day or the uh, other. So that's a way to contribute back, and people are beginning to learn that. And it's also they're, they're realizing it's this important. It's important productivity or motivation is not dependent on how much money you can throw at somebody. Motivation is going to come from if you get that person happy. And how does that person get happy? By actually building things and owning that and getting recognized for that. Right. Mm. That's what open source communities provide. And that's what companies are realizing that they're happy. They're happier workers if they're working open source rather than they're working like these closed proprietary technologies where there's a very strict hierarchy of how you place in the system. Developers are beginning to see that in India. Honestly, that's a massive sea change. I've seen that happening. I will not name the company, one of the largest software companies in India, where there's a there's a sea change happening. This company comes from a background of having a very strict hierarchy, working on extremely closed proprietary systems, very enterprise focused. You know, everything is, has to be like three layers of forms and stacks. These guys have an open source uh, initiative, and that's just going to get gangbusters for them. And they're they're finding it hard to you know find people fast enough to fill resource wow. uh, needs for their massive projects. Right. So there's a. I mean, the last three, five, three to five years has been a complete 180 degrees as, as far as I see it. Today, somebody who wants to set up a company doesn't think about, okay, I'm going to get an Adobe license or I'm going to get a Microsoft license. They're going to say, okay, I'm going to get like, you know, into Drupal or I'm going to get into Ruby. I'm going to start building applications and I'm going to provide those services. That's a, that's a different thing, completely different mm. thing from what it was happening, what was happening before. The greatest thing is what we discovered this February. We had a massive uh, student turnout at Drupal Camp Mumbai. So what we what we got this time was we got a lot of students at Drupal Camp Mumbai. We launched a Drupal Campa Campus Ambassador Program, and we realized that there's a massive amount of interest. These people want to; they're hungry for for um, knowing what their futures uh, what their future is. And there's a better future in open source than it is in something like a .NET you know certification or whatever. Even .NET, by the way, is open source. Ali, thanks so much. It's been Thank really, you. really good to see you. Thanks Thank for you taking so the time. Thank you so much.
Take care, Jam. I will go and cough my lungs out now. All right, I'll help you some. Okay, take care. Bye-bye, guys.